Yo, what is up guys, Jordan here, and in today's video we're talking more 1.1 and more specifically a brand new light cone coming our way for all Nihility characters. And that light cone here is before the tutorial mission starts. And it is a 4 star light cone exclusive to Nihility characters and I think it's going to be a complete game changer for this path. Now let's take a quick look at what this light cone does and then discuss why, in my opinion, it's definitely not one you're going to want to miss out on. Alright, so we can see here that this light cone at superimposition level 1 grants 20% effect hit rating as well as generating 4 energy when the wearer attacks if the enemy has a defense reduction. Now it's worth noting these stats are with it at level 1, superimposition level 1, and we've noticed that in the announcement they mentioned the event where we're going to be getting this light cone here is actually going to grant superimposers for continued participation. Meaning that in theory we could get this light cone all the way up to superimposition 5, which is a big deal because on most 4 star light cones in the game currently we can actually see the effects double once you get it up to superimposition 5. So we could be up for a light cone that grants 40% effect hit resist rating and also 8 energy if the enemy has a defense reduction on them. Now how good is that and why are you hyping this damn light turn up so much Grimro? Well let's dive into it. Alright so the first thing I want to point out to you guys is that we don't really have any good free to play Nihility options for Nihility supporting characters like Pella and like Silverwolf coming down the line. So if you were to pull Silverwolf as your choice well you're not really gonna have a very good light turn to put on her unless you pulled her signature or you had a really high rating of this light cone here. The resolution shines as pearls of sweat. The other free to play light cone for Mata is just not very good for supports. It's more of a damage related light cone. So overall there's just not a whole lot on the table for free to play players until now. So that is point number one. If you are free to play and you want to play with some supporting nihility units, this light cone is completely broken for that play style and it's absolutely one you're gonna want to get in one point. One. Now, if you aren't afraid to play player though, and you do have resolution shines as pearls of sweat, why would you want to consider this other light turn then? Well, I think that there is a lot of merit in having options available to you for all the characters that are going to be coming out in the future. And we can actually see how this exact effect played out in a lesser degree on harmony characters. Now, there is a ton of really good harmony light turns, but a lot of characters are defined by the fact that they can gain a additional energy and manipulate their rotation by using light turns such as meshing of cogs as well as memories of the past. I think that pretty much all of the supports have builds with them using those specific light turns. I know that Bronya can affect her rotation when spamming her basic attacks with meshing of cogs and memory of the past. I know that Tinyun has two different builds, one with the energy, one without it. You can go with either three actions or four action rotation. And of course, Asta can go with the insane two skill rotation as well as other rotations to go along with that energy recharge which you'll gain access to. Now Nihility doesn't have any sort of access to energy recharge so there's not really any builds to speak of it's kind of just use the one light cone which gives you either the most damage or the one supporting option that we have here and that's pretty much it. But with the introduction of this new light cone granting eight energy when you hit an enemy with a defense break is a big deal. It's going to open up so many more options for the Nihility path and it's going to really allow you a lot more flexibility with how you build your Nihility characters. Alright, in order to give you guys a bit of a better perspective on how this light cone really shakes things up and is going to empower the Nihility path for support specifically, I figured we should decide and kind of compare two Harmony supports to two Nihility supports. Now of course there's other Harmony characters and there's other Nihility characters, but I figured that these guys are reasonably comparable in terms of what they bring to the table. Now Bronya and Tinyun are by far the most represented Harmony characters right now and if people have them, just Generally, they're going to think about using them. And that is definitely a pretty good thing to go off. Both these characters have a lot of options in terms of their rotation, as mentioned earlier, and they get access to pretty much all of their power because they have the tools they need to. They don't need a whole lot of gear outside of speed, and they also have pretty much all the tools they need to execute their rotation to have 
close to or very good uptime on everything they've got in that kit. Now, if you switch over to Pella and Silver Wolf, specifically Pella right now, she definitely does have a few issues. Namely, keeping her ultimate up and active on the enemies to guarantee that the team is actually taking advantage of her defense shred, which she has access to. Now, it's going to vary how much uptime you have on Pella based on the enemy, how you're dealing with them, and also their speed. But overall, one thing is absolutely going to be true, and is that is, if you could execute more ultimates in a fight and maintain higher uptime on her debuff, that would make her a whole lot more viable. Now, Silver Wolf isn't out yet, but I imagine she's going to have pretty much the same question mark, and that is because the devs have revealed that her ultimate has been changed and now applies a defense shred as well and no one knows how many turns that's going to last really yet but if it's anything like Pella's like two or three turns she is also going to want to have some way to manipulate her rotation to increase the uptime of that ultimate now what do you need to increase your uptime of your ultimate well it's energy recharge and that is exactly what is going to be granted over on by this new light cone now you're probably thinking okay we need some defense shred in order to activate the energy portion of this well no problems both these characters have defense shred in their kit and that is going to be pretty easily accessible for both silver wolf and pella they both have entry kind of abilities we don't know if silver wolf's technique will grant defense shred on her entry but we definitely know that pella's does and silver wolf has defense shred on her basic attack that has been confirmed based on the live stream so both these guys are going to be able to easily access the full potential of that light cone now in addition to that unfortunately nihility have another big thing they need to worry about compared to harmony characters and that is that they need to worry about a stat called effect hit rating in the end game some enemies have a stat called effect hit resistance which essentially slashes the ability for you to apply debuffs to them which is a pretty big deal now to counteract that you can get effect hit rating on all of your gear and you need a good amount of it and like we're talking like 60 70 80 percent even more in some cases to get a good effect hit rating and make sure that your effects are going to be going off on these enemies and that is a big pressure point on gear and means you're going to be up to getting specific relics and then you're also going to have to manage that with getting enough defense as well as speed to make sure that your units don't die. Now overall this means that Nihility is much harder to gear than other characters and when you take a look at a light cone like Resolution Pearls of Sweat it doesn't have any effect hit rating on it, it doesn't have any speed on it, it doesn't have any stats meaning you have to get all of that stuff on your gear. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing that light cone is very good but this other light cone a still you with a lot of areas which you are in now you might be thinking okay well harmony already has this energy recharge you know it's got it how is this any better well the thing with harmony characters is that both tinyun and bronya both have buffs and an ultimate which buffs and those are not traded as attacks and the light cones in question here all specify that you need to attack to gain the energy now that means that a lot of the time when you're using the rotations of bronya and tinyun you're not even using the light cone and people still use it on top of that that, meaning it's very very powerful now switch over to the nihility characters here their ultimates their skills and their basic attacks all are counted as attacks meaning you are getting a lot more value from that energy recharge on this light cone which is a massive deal meaning in the course of a fight you're going to be extracting a lot more energy and gaining a lot more energy and really working hard now if you guys didn't know special energy sources like this from light cones and abilities with the exception of tinyun's ultimate is actually multiplied by energy recharge ropes which actually means that you're going to be getting way more than eight energy you're going to be getting closer to like 10 energy per activation of these light cones which is very very cool and i think that it's going to mean it's going to be even more powerful on nihility characters specifically now the question is how powerful exactly all right, first up, let's talk Silver Wolf here. Now, she's a character which we're going to make a few assumptions about. So in the trial, I've taken a look at some footage. It looks like she's going to have roughly 110 energy cost for her ultimate. We also understand that her ultimate is one that you want to use as frequently as possible as it applies a defense shred to the enemy based on current information from the live stream. So keeping that defense shred up is going to be critical to her success, meaning we need to use that ultimate as frequently as possible. Assuming that she's like every other the character in the game with that ultimate cost using an energy recharge rope she right now is going to be able to ultimate every four actions now is that good for a support it's okay and now unfortunately she's going to be having some trouble i would imagine keeping that debuff up unless she's very very fast 
on the ultimate, which means it's gonna hurt her viability. Now, if we use that light cone on her though, things begin to change. Now, with that light cone, she can actually use the ultimate every three actions because it grants her so much additional energy, not only to her basic, her skill, but also her ultimate. Now, that means that she's gonna have a much higher uptime on that ultimate and that debuff, which we hope is gonna be really strong. But also, in addition to that, she's gonna be breaking a whole lot more with her ultimate because remember, the ultimate breaks for three break units when we have a single target ultimate on the table meaning she's gonna be a fantastic breaker and have a lot higher chance at giving you what you need in terms of the debuffs and its uptime now in addition to that though it's also going to be a pretty big deal for another character on our list here which a lot of people probably already have access to Pella is the other character which can use this light turn. Now, Pella is a bit of a special case though, because she already has a very powerful energy regeneration talent here. It states that whenever she attacks a debuffed enemy, she will gain an amount of energy. But you'll notice here that it has a special line. It says, this effect can only be triggered one time per attack. Now, if we bounce back over to the light turn, hmm, do we see that restriction on this light turn? I don't see it, which is a little bit sussy. Now, there is a scenario in which Pella may be able to use her ultimate and if you're able to ultimate again in time while enemies still have the debuff down well you might just end up getting a lot more energy than you were bargaining for now I have no idea if this is gonna work so we're not gonna assume that works but it very much could work in this game which would make the light turn completely bonkers now there is another thing to consider though with Pella now it says here that on her talent this effect can only be triggered one time per attack. Now there can be some pretty sussy stuff going on in the code and it might not allow you to stack this energy recharge on top of the light current energy recharge but we have no idea if that's going to be the case. I would be shocked if it ended up being that restrictive but you know who can say. But you know disclaimers there but let's say that it does work. Let's say that you can stack Pella's energy recharge on top of the light current energy recharge and the light current is going to give eight energy at max superposition levels which we'll all be able to get. Well right now Pella with an energy recharge rope can use her ultimate every three basic attacks and using a skill doesn't really impact that at this stage also using the sprightly von Wack also doesn't impact that at least based on my current understanding comment down below if i'm wrong but using the light turn and adding that into the equation if it works would actually take pella's rotation from three actions down to two actions now the thing with pella which makes her a little bit hard to use is that her ultimate only lasts for two turns on the enemy and if they're relatively quick yeah, that means that Pella's gonna have to move like 50% faster or 33% faster or some amount faster than the enemy now that is not easy to do without gear especially while trying to get effect hit rating now if we can change Pella's rotation though to two actions instead of three actions whew, that becomes a whole lot easier to achieve and manage meaning that it's a massive buff for Pella and her viability now it's not just that though because as mentioned with Silver Wolf Pella is a breaker an icebreaker and an AoE Icebreaker, meaning you're gonna be getting a lot more ultimates in a fight, and it's gonna be a lot stronger. I think there's gonna be a lot of potential with Pella. If the light turn stacks with her talent, it's gonna be pretty insane, and it's gonna be a case of, oh man, who do I use the light turn on? If you have Silver Wolf and Pella, it's pretty tough to decide because it's insane on both of them, and it shortens both of their rotations by a meaningful amount. Now, it is also worth mentioning, just as a little bit of trivia here, in close base, Two. We knew that Silver Wolf had an Eidolon which granted her a ton of energy recharge after she used her ultimate if the enemy was debuffed. If she still has that Eidolon and it works similarly, she should also be able to achieve a two action rotation with the light cone, which would be pretty hilarious. So it's going to remain to be seen whether or not things play out how we think, but it could be pretty ridiculous if these Nihility characters are just basically spamming their ultimates because of this light cone, and let's not forget that you also get a ton of a stat they need, which is effect hit rating. I'm pretty excited, but the excitement doesn't stop there. Now we are completely in the land of theory crafting and hopium here, but I think that there may be a world in which you may want to consider this light cone specifically here on some damage related nihility characters. Now the reason I'm saying that is because it says here that when the wearer attacks enemies, 
which have reduced defense. Now, the defense thing is reasonably easy to satisfy if you have Pella or Silver Wolf in your team. Now, what if you put this on a damaging Nihility character? And what if that Nihility character had capabilities to do AoE, but not just AoE, they had additional ways to trigger attacks which could use this energy recharge? I'm talking about Kafka. Kafka in previous betas has had a follow-up attack as her talent. And I don't see why that wouldn't trigger this light cone's active effect. And that would mean that you're not getting eight energy once per turn, you're getting it twice per turn. So you're getting 16 extra energy per action, which is the equivalent of basically double attacking with a basic, almost, which is pretty crazy from my perspective. Now, whether or not that works out to be better damage or not is completely up in the air, but I definitely think it would be a cool thing to experiment with, and it's definitely something you're going to want as an option. So picking up this light turn, especially because it's free to play, and it looks like we're going to be able to get some super position levels of it at least, well, it just seems like a no brainer. I definitely think that this is going to be one of the top things to look out for in 1.1 and one of the funnest light turns to mess around with, and we can definitely be maybe seeing it being used on characters like Welt, as well as Sampo, if you pair them with a Nihility character like Pella or Silver Wolf. And this adds a lot of really interesting synergies, which I don't think a lot of people were expecting. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to chuck the video a like, and of course, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But with all that said, hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, cheers.